Welcome back to Small Arms Firearms, where starving kids in Africa send me food. Today on Small Arms Firearms, again, we're going to be looking at the Shalotech P365. This time, we're going to be kind of comparing it to how does it perform next to other full-size pistols, competition-style pistols, a compact pistol. We have a couple on the table that we're going to be doing that with. For starters, we're going to be comparing it to a full-size striker-fired pistol, the Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0 with an aftermarket apex trigger and an aftermarket threaded barrel so we can add a compensator and the rail on the bottom allows us to add a gas pedal to it to make it more in line with what the Shade Low Tech has to offer. And another one we're going to be comparing it to will be the CZ Shadow 2 but not the full size one, the compact one. I don't currently own the compact, but we were able to spend a lot of time with it. So we'll just have the full size one here just for a little bit of comparison. Now, all three of these pistols come with a decent capacity. So the M&P 17, the Shalo Tech 17, the Shadow 2 compact comes stock with 15 rounds, but obviously you can use other Shadow 2 mags that go all the way up to like 30 something crazy. Same with the other ones on the table. What we're looking to try and prove here is that can any of these guns do everything to where you don't have to have multiple pistols? Can you use one as everyday carry? Can you come home and use it as home defense? And can you take it out on the weekends and shoot matches with it? Disclaimer here, all of the firearms, all the ammo was purchased with my own money. Nothing was given to me or sent for review. This is all multiple opinions from about five to six different individuals that had some time on the range with all of these pistols. We also had multiple shooters try the Shalo Tech in its original form where it did not have the Parker Mountain compensator and barrel on it. Instead, it had the stock Shalotech Sentinel XXLC upper, which is an integrated compensator similar to the P365X macro, but it has the 3.7 inch barrel on it, which is the same barrel length as a P365XL, not 3.1 inches. So we shot it with the compensator, dedicated compensator, we shot it without the dedicated compensator, we shot the M&P with and without compensators, and we want to get an idea on high speed what kind of muzzle rise we're seeing, what kind of recoil impulse we're having, the speed that the pistols can be shot, just to get an idea of which one works better in multiple users' hands. Now I will say the Shalotech does have an immediate advantage off the bat, unfortunately, because I don't have iron sights with it. So all the other pistols were shot with iron sights, whereas the Shalotech does have a dot. So Myself, I am able to shoot dots faster than iron, so fortunately this is just going to be a little bit subjective. And since the Shalotech does kind of have a higher price range, that's why we wanted to add the Shadow 2 Compact into the mix to give something a little more of a fair shot at taking the title potentially away if it would actually focus. And so our testing is kind of revolving around shootability, if that's even a word, reliability, cost, concealability, usefulness. So let's start with the M&P 2.0. How does this really fit in? Well, this was one of the first pistols that I ever bought. Uh, the ergonomics on it I feel are fantastic for the price range especially. The stippling on this grip is just amazing. If you've ever had a chance to hold an M&P 2.0 for a stock striker fired pistol, you really can't get any better than this. Springfield doesn't, uh, Glock doesn't, Canik doesn't, Walther doesn't. This is the best stippling I've ever felt on a original stock grip. It also comes with three different size back straps to help fit your hand better so you can get a better purchase on it. I will say that the Apex Trigger upgrade is not necessarily, it's, it's not a necessity, but it really does improve the trigger pull on this pistol to where that's the reset, that's the break. It's a phenomenal trigger for a striker fired gun I, I don't know any other way around that. It really is a good trigger and it beats the P365 trigger in this aftermarket form. The stock M&P 2.0 trigger is definitely an improvement over the first version. It's still nothing to write home about though. As far as shootability, you're gonna see some high speed footage of it without the uh, compensator on. Um, yeah, it, it shoots great for a full size striker fired pistol. I mean, it's nice and lightweight compared to the CZs. Uh, it's 
it can work as a competition pistol in production class. I, I wouldn't necessarily use this uh, in like a carry optics if I wanted to be really competitive. The speed of the trigger just isn't there for me. Um, it does have more flip that you can see than any of the other guns on here. But where it really shines is its price, dependability, reliability. There have been numerous torture tests on these pistols where they're throwing them in mud, in sand, in water, ice, rust, leaving them outside. Uh, Honest Outlaw left one of his outside for months with the mag in it, chambered the round out in that mag that was left outside, rust all over the thing, and the thing still fires. You can count on this thing to run. Duty gun, home defense, it's there. The concealability part is where it's going to hit a brick wall, for me at least. It's just full-size striker-fired pistols. Full-size pistols, in that matter, for anything, are just too big to conceal. Um, you want that nice 17-round capacity or more. Uh, you want that full-size grip for ergonomics and being able to control the pistol, but you trade off with the fact that concealing it is not comfortable and it's going to print probably a whole lot. And if you have something inside the waistband, you really don't want a giant pistol like this. It's a little heavier. Personal preference, and I know that a lot of other people have that preference as well. So yes, great duty gun for the price. There's a reason why so many people use it in law enforcement. Home defense, it's been my home defense pistol for years. It was one of the first pistols I bought for home defense and not just for plinking. It's a phenomenal workhorse and I love it for the price, especially with some of the used prices I was finding these things online for. You can see an image here. This was just a quick search on Gun Broker. Nothing crazy, but I'm sure your local gun store probably has a couple. With that being said, at this point with what I know now and the products I have, even if I was using this as a duty gun, I still find that there's a better one on the list for outside the waistband carry. It just costs a little more. Now this is a fun one. So just imagine this is the compact. So a little shorter on the barrel, a little shorter on the grip. Um, but overall, it's the same exact platform and same exact firearm as the CZ Shadow 2 Compact. This one's just bigger. Um, I found that the compact fit exactly how the stock one does in my hand. Um, I have the lock grips on this in the palm swell. So that's gonna make it fill my hand a lot better. The CZ Shadow 2 stock grips are a little too thin for me, so I would have to replace those. When I picked up the compact for the first time, I really wanted it to blow me away. I wanted myself to just go, all right, this is gonna be my new carry. Considering I'm already carrying the Shalo Tech, I wanted this one to replace everything. I love CZ's products. They make a damn good firearm, and I was really hoping that that's what I was gonna find. The trigger, of course, is amazing. Um, if, if I would be carrying it, I would probably carry it in the half cock position and then draw on your first shot would be double action and then you're at single action afterwards, which is nothing. These single action triggers on CZ Shadows are amazing. Um, it makes more accurate, quicker follow-up shots and you're not trying to jerk the trigger as hard as some of the striker fired pistols so your shots stay more level. Now, for carrying. The Shadow 2 weighs quite a bit. It's definitely uh, aluminum lower and you can feel it. It's much heavier than the Shalo Tech and it's much heavier than the full size M&P. So if weight is an issue when you're carrying, yeah, it, it's, it's heavy. And it's still not much smaller than just a full size Shadow 2. Still larger considerably from the Shalo Tech and that's gonna be a problem for me with a small frame. I'm not gonna be comfortable carrying that all day long. Now, as far as competition, yeah, this thing will run lights out in competition. Right? You could run it in carry optics, no problem. And I said we're looking at shootability. Yeah, it's a Shadow 2. This, I, we've shot everything from Glocks to Hellcats to Shields to the M&P to Daggers, anything you can think of as far as compact that could be a carry pistol. This thing shoots the best out of all of them, pretty much because it's a CZ Shadow 2. The frame is heavy, the slide has a lighter weight, there's less reciprocating mass, it comes back down to zero quicker, the triggers are phenomenal. You can shoot these things fast. I love them, but for the price, it's $1,200 if that's what you can find it for before tax and everything, that's an expensive EDC. Home defense, absolutely can work for home defense. These things are reliable. I haven't even been cleaning this thing at all. I've just been adding a little bit of oil here on the rails and sending it. But for me, I would much rather have, if I'm going to go that route, a full-size 
striker fired for potentially home defense, and then just pick up a carry gun or have a carry gun and then a full size shadow too that you could use for competition. As you're kind of seeing here, these pistols have a spot where they can fit usually two of those items, but not all three. And here in the high speed that you've seen, the Shadow 2 Compact comes back down to zero very quick without being compensated, without being ported, and without having a gas pedal. So adding those things onto a Shadow 2 Compact could potentially make it just a workhorse. But the size is what the problem is for me, and I just don't feel comfortable carrying that without printing or moving around a lot. I just It's just too uncomfortable after putting it in the holster and trying it on. Once again, we're to the Shalo Tech. As far as the trigger on this one, it's not terrible. It's not great, it's not terrible. It's kind of a decent long reset and it's a little spongy to where it goes off. And it has this take up, which is easy to find the wall and then spongy break kind of. It's not as crisp as some other triggers. The Canic is definitely better. The m and is definitely better. There are aftermarket triggers on, out there that you can replace this with. It's a full trigger kit. I haven't gotten around to do it. I still shoot it fast enough. Without that, maybe one day I will actually change it and see how fast this thing can go. I have been running this thing since I put the Parker Mountain comp barrel combo on here just nonstop. I've shot it so much that I had to relock tight the screws on the optic because they wiggled their way out a little bit and the optic started to get loose. But I want to run drills. I want to practice. We've been putting it on high speed. I've been having friends shoot it down at the range so they can see and compare it to anything else they've had. And as I said in the previous video, the ergonomics on this are phenomenal for the size. That gas pedal thumb rest just helps you index and find where you need to be to get that first shot right on target, right off the bat, and control it even more. The compensator on here just does wonders, and it blows our mind how fast and how flat such a small pistol can be. We were already fairly impressed with the Shalo Tech upper on it with the integrated comp, but the dedicated comp from Parker Mountain just makes this a whole different beast. For a subcompact pistol that's smaller than anything else that I've shot, except for obviously the XL grip module, which we also put the compensator on, which will also show some uh, high speed footage of that because that was still fun to shoot. But nothing beats just the comfortability of the Shalo Tech lower with that thumb throttle and with the compensator on it for shooting it. That feels good, that feels... Finish it out. I locked in there, and it's just like... It's not moving. Yeah. Yep. It feels pretty good. Now, but compared to like the Icarus, with so these have the same uppers. Uh-huh, right. So like the barrel length, the barrel, the slide, everything is the same, the uppers. The only difference is, I mean, there's a flashlight on here. I don't know what that's gonna make much, but so the only difference is the lowers. Yeah. And you, and compared to this, which how this do you one, like rate even it? Though it doesn't have the stiff like that one does. It, it feels like I'm I'm more. You're getting a better grip. A bit, getting a better grip. I don't know if it's because it's a little skinnier up front here. And the gripping better. And, and then, what about this one though? It's tiny. Yeah. That one's tiny. That, that's a big drawback to that is because it is so tiny. So if you had to choose between these two? I think I'd still lean towards that one. You'd still lean towards the stock XL? So. Yep. Just because of the grip on I it? Think, yeah, because I can hang on to it easier. Even though it, my pinky's floating in La La Land, you know, I can still hang on to it easier. Person number six that has said that the $450 Icarus lower. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> it's not as good as a stock. Hey, you win some, you lose some. Hey, no, this is why we do <laughs> this, though. And I, I almost that. bought one of these. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait. It looks cool. And it Steve, cool. that's why. And, St and everybody online's like, these are phenomenal, they're the best, they're the best. And Steve had it, and I was like, I, I don't actually like it. I, I'm sorry, but... Yeah. No, that's what we learn. That's why yeah. we all share and shoot each other's stuff all the time. Well, it's an yep. improvement over the, the stock for me. That's all that matters. So your gun. that was that was worthwhile, but it's not as good as the shallow tech. Now dependability. How how reliable is this pistol gonna be? With, same thing with the CZ. I I've shot well over a thousand rounds since I got the Parker Mountain. Many rounds before that with just the Shalotech lower. 
I have not cleaned it. I've only been oiling it. I'm still trying to run it through if I can get it to fail. No failure to feeds, ejection issues, light primer strikes. This thing just is straight up reliable. And I'm sure if I clean it once every thousand rounds, that's plenty because at this point I'm well over that. So where does it fit in for all these categories? Concealed carry, EDC, absolutely. It carries real well. It's fairly lightweight. The, th the thumb throttle fits great in that slim fit holster. The light works well with it. I can wear it all day, not have any problems. And it just, it works. It is a little bigger than a P365 XL or some of the other models like the X Macro, but not much. It's still in that subcompact, smaller range and you get the full size capacity of 17 plus one with it. Home defense. Well, I get home and I have an EDC on, usually I'll take it off and have more of a full size pistol because better capacity, longer barrel, better ballistics, right? Well, I have tested all of my nine millimeter ammo, the hollow points and uh, solid copper projectiles. I've tested them all in gel with either a 3.1 inch barrel or 3.7 inch barrel from about 20 feet. And guess what? They all open just fine. I can't see much of a difference at all, even over the chronograph from a four and a quarter inch barrel versus a 3.7 inch barrel. So I prefer to have that little shorter length to have just more comfortability when carrying. With that in mind, we've already checked off the box for everyday carry. Now I don't have to worry about taking it off at home and picking a different pistol. This thing can be from dawn to dusk, my defensive pistol. Now competition. It doesn't really have necessarily the greatest spot for USPSA, but it absolutely can. You just have a compensator on it, so you're in open class, which doesn't really make sense to run an open class. But IDPA shooters should really pay attention to this. It's small, would easily fit in the box. The compensator is totally legal on it. It's fast and it's flat. You cannot deny it. This thing could be a complete workhorse and IDPA. This little pistol can literally do it all. I was so surprised by it is the only reason why I'm making this video again. It's the only reason why I'm talking about Shalo Tech again, that I want people to understand that I know it's a long wait time for it and that sucks. But in the meantime, you can pick up either the FCU or you can buy a used XL or X macro, whatever you can find for cheap because it's going to be worth it in the long time for a carry pistol. Get out and try one. It's amazing. We even had a new shooter out this last range trip so we could let them try the Icarus, the Shalo Tech, the XL module, the M&P with and without compensators. We want to get everybody else's opinion to make sure I'm just not crazy and just giving you bogus shit. Now the price is what's kind of hard to swallow on this pistol, but if you look at it as it covers the bases for IDPA, it covers the bases for home defense, and it can be your everyday carry. I like the idea of building around a pistol system rather than having a bunch of different kinds of mags, a bunch of different accessories, holsters, and everything that you have to buy to fit this, especially if you're doing competition because you have your mag carriers and outside the waistband versus inside the waistband. It's just nice to be able to have a system that is all built around one pistol. And to be honest, the modularity on this is pretty insane for a P365 as there are I don't, I don't even know how many different versions there are at this point. But as far as price, you're looking at 350 brand new for an FCU. Like I said, I suggest finding a used whole pistol for around 450. So you have all the parts if you need them eventually. The Parker Mountain Machine barrel and compensator is 360. The Shalo Tech lower from their side is 375. Uh, you can see a picture of the different lowers. Uh, mine was the one in the middle. And then they also have, here's a picture of the pre-built package where you can get everything to where you just drop the FCU in if that's something you want. If you want to go the Parker Mountain Machine route, which I have been falling in love with, I would suggest you just buy the lower for this time being. Now, total everything up, you're at $1,100 right at about that. Um, so you're still cheaper than a Shadow 2 Compact and you don't have an optic, which you're going to need. So now you're up to what, around 1500 and you need magazines because if you didn't buy the whole package from Shalo Tech, you're going to need to find some magazines for it. Depending on what size grip module you pick from Shalo Tech, that could be the 15, 17, whatever they are. You just still have to get up there in price to have an EDC. Really interesting to see what we can find in these pistols nowadays and what we can accomplish and what we can get out of them. 
I hope you guys don't think I'm some kind of crazy weird fanboy for Shalo Tech, but the products that they're offering are phenomenal. And when I find something that works this well, I really want to tell everyone about it and to make sure they know about it and to see the results on high speed and to have new shooters take it out every time and be just as amazed as I was is really why I want to bring this video back up into the forefront and let everyone see what it can do compared to your full size kind of pistols also. I also want to say thank you to everybody. We hit 500 subscribers. That's awesome. I really appreciate everybody tuning in, and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye.